Booyah. God's good, isn't he? I love that little whoa. -ho. My joy. Yes. He's turned my sadness into just joy and gladness. Yes. Man. Yes. <laughs> if you've been going through some things, that's a yes. that's your promise. Yes. He's turned my yes. my sorrow, my sadness yes. into such joy yes. and gladness. Yes. Yes. That's his plan for you. Yes. Joy and gladness, yes. peace, Woo. prosperity, yes. love, hope. All those things. That's his plan for us, isn't it? Yes. Everything that has come against you has to start, has to kneel, has to bow yes. to the power of that yes. name. Amen. That name of Jesus. Doesn't matter what you're yes. going through. Doesn't matter where you've been. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter who, what you've seen. Doesn't matter. Today is a brand new day. His mercies are new and fresh. Yes. And today he intends for you yes. to have such joy yes. and gladness. Yes. Because you are more than conquerors, right? Yes. yes. You're more than conquerors. Amen. You didn't just conquer. You're more than victorious. Yes. You didn't just get by or just make it no. through by the skin of your teeth no. or by the shin of your shinny shin shin or whatever they want to say. You're not that person. You are an overcomer about beyond anything you can think or hope. And yes. I know a lot of you have some good ideas and yes. some good hopes, right? Yes. yes. He wants you to go above and beyond all of that yes. because he loves you. Yes. That's what he desires for you. And why is that? Because who are, who are we on earth? We are the glory of God Amen. on earth. Yep. When people see us, they should see the glory of God. Amen. And we may, just by our presence, we draw people to us. Yes. We, we see that all the time. I understand it more clearly all the time. We were in a situation where we were with a bunch of people, not that we were doing it, but we were at a place where there were a bunch of people drinking and stuff and, and carrying on and stuff. And guess who they were drawn to? Yes. The <laughs> The glory. They wanted to, I mean, drunk as skunks, or however you want to yes. say it, they wanted to talk to us. Amen. They yes. wanted to talk to us about God. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Go figure. Yes. Yes. Go figure. They wanted to drink. Yeah, they wanted to drink of a different drink. Yes. They wanted to drink in the Holy Spirit. Spirit. They Amen. want a truth. Yes. They're drowning their sorrows yes. in something that doesn't help them and never will help them. But yet, yes. in their inside of them, the spirit that is inside every single person on this earth has a yearning for God. And that's what draws people to us. Amen. That's why you have to be ready and on target no matter where you're at. Yes. You might think, oh, nobody's going to want to talk to God who in this bar here. Or this, yes, yeah, oh, yes, they do. You got to be ready and on target because you can help turn someone's sorrow into joy, joy, and, gladness. joy and gladness. That's right. That's what he desires. Yes. That's who she said it perfectly. Debbie said it perfectly. We are here to do God's work. We are here to bring people up to to a new level yes. to help people. We are, and I, you know me. I don't like it when I see people, Christians, say, you're going to go to hell because you're doing this. You're going to go to hell before you're doing that. That's not the way Jesus ministered ever. You show me in the Bible. You know who he said mean things to? Yeah. The religious people. The ones that were not in a relationship with him. The religious people he said mean things to. You whitewashed tomb, you. You know? Vipers. Yeah, you brood of vipers. The people that are having, that are in such deep sin. He loved them. He showed nothing but love to them and acceptance, didn't he? Yes. He wasn't yeah. accepting their sin. Don't get me wrong. He was never accepting their never. sin. But he was accepting them as a person. Amen. Because that's not who they are. Your sin does not determine who you are. No. Right. Oh, well. <laughs> yes. Good preaching. Ooh. It's just been an attitude all morning, hasn't yes. it? Yes. yes. God is in this place and he wants to help people, he wants to minister people, he wants you to understand he has plans for you, yeah, man, man. plans to prosper you, yeah, plans man. to bring you to your vision. Yeah, Are you all looking at everybody else's vision every day? Yeah, Are you reading that quickening book and yeah. understanding you're lifting up somebody else's vision and somebody else is lifting up your vision? Yeah. That's why we're seeing all these things falling into place. Yes, yes. That's why we're seeing miracles. Yes. Because we're, lit, we're a body united in prayer for one another. Yes. Yes. That's what we want to see all the time, right? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 
just a just a phrase out of this book I want to share with you. God is not omnipotent in heaven and impotent on the earth. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. God is not omnipotent in heaven and impotent on the earth. We think, you know, he can do anything in heaven, but he, he can't miss me. He can't, you know, work my circumstances here. It's just too, you just don't understand. It's too complicated. Or it's too bad. Or it's too hard. God is not omnipotent in heaven and impotent on the earth. Can you put God with impotent? No. No. He's the God of above, beyond, all that stuff. He is the God of of forever. He is the God eternal. He is the God, my provider. He's my God, my healer. He's God, my, my sanctuary. He's all those things, isn't he? Yes. My comfort, everything. My provider. If your provider is God, can you imagine what is available to you? Your provider is God. It's not you. It's not your paycheck. It's God. That's right. He's your provider. Yes. Amen. He is the one. All right. So, God, I'm just going to read a paragraph out of, and you know, I was, I, I, I was going to give this book to Danita because I'm passing on the books I'm reading. Oh, she did. Well, never mind that. I, I was going to say, I was going to, because I've been passing on my books that I'm reading. She wanted to read what I was reading. So I said, okay. And I've been having a hard time part with this. I'm all done with it, but I can go back and back and back. Because it is an excellent book. God is not enough. He's too much. That's right. Because it talks about healing. It talks about prosperity. It talks about your relationships. It's not just money. And he says that very clearly through here, too. God wants to prosper you. Yes. Get your eyes on the things he wants to prosper you and your health and all of that stuff. So, okay. And we talked last week about some of this. but So, God can follow through with prospering you. Is he the God that quits? Nope. No. no. Is he a God that can't handle things? No. 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 He can follow through with prospering you. He can follow through with administering healing to your body. Yes. Do you believe that? I yes. Know, he can follow through with prospering your body and healing. He can follow through with saving your lost loved ones. Yes. Do you believe yes. that? Yes. 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 The question is, will you follow through with what God has told you to do in order to see all these things manifested in your life? The end of Ephesians 3.20 says that God will do what he said according to the power that worketh in us. Yes. So what's that power? We talked about that before. What's that power that works in us? It's the Word, it's the Holy Spirit, yes. it's prayer, it's you being here in fellowship, and all those things. You follow through with what God is telling you to bring strength to you. He tells you all these things to do, to come to church, to be in fellowship, to pray, to read the Word. All those things. He tells you all those things to do for you. He doesn't need your praise and glory. He does not need it. You need it. Yes. You need everything that we talk about. You need it to be at a place where you can receive everything he has promised for you. The ball is in our court. Yes. Yes. So it's up to us whether we will make a withdrawal. Well, he put stuff in our account. You know, we got stuff in our account. Jesus put a lot of stuff in our, in our account. You know, he put a lot of stuff. He put health, healing, prosperity in our account. He put it in our account, okay? So it's up to us whether we make a withdrawal or we just stare at the numbers. Wishing we had what they stood for. Have you, do you, I mean, can you grasp onto that? It's all there for you. Quit just sitting there staring at the numbers and staring at the promises and take them. Yes. Grab them. Yes. Get a hold of them. Yeah. Healing and prosperity are God's, but Jesus has deposited them in our account through his blood at his death and his resurrection. Will we receive what he died to give us? If we do, the Lord will keep on filling our accounts. When you make a withdrawal, it doesn't get any smaller. He just keeps filling it. Yes. He just keeps filling it. Oh, yeah. yeah. When we start making withdrawals, he'll heap more than we ask for into our hands. More healing, more prosperity, more peace, more joy, more gladness, all those yeah. things. Amen. Hallelujah. Servers come. He wants to prosper.